arrival at Lenyi, a small town in Shandong province. As in every city in China, a busy scene at the local market. But if you look closely, you will discover lots of fur fashion accessories. No wonder Lini and the surrounding area is an important fur industry center. Fur fashion is everywhere to be seen and is displayed at the shopping malls. Even a stuffed toy, probably an arctic fox, is displayed to further the mood for buying these fur coats. A motorcycle taxi brings us on a trailer to various fur farms in the countryside. <coughs> this dog is watching over ghoulish merchandise. There is a heap of skins of his own species. Dogs, skins piled up for the wholesalers. The owners proudly show us the remains or the skin of a freshly slaughtered German shepherd dog. An estimated 2 million dogs are killed in China for fur. But now the traders complain the business is slacking badly. The economic crisis abroad is hurting the business. They want to wait until prices stabilize before selling the skins. Off we go. The second appointment is at the large mink farm. These cages actually meet international standards. You will see the animals display the same stereotypical behaviors as everywhere else in the world. No wonder the cages are sterile, while mink live in or near the water. Here they must be content with only having water in a coffee cup. Like other fur factories, this operation is feeling the economic crisis. China produced 8 million mink pelts this year. But two years ago, in the boom year, over 20 million mink were bred in barren, standard wire mesh cages. Causing these active wild animals to pick up stereotypical movements to counter the stress. Then we head to the next fur factory. It's a mixed fox and raccoon dog fur factory. The animals are in improvised, rusty cages on stone pillars. Their droppings simply fall through the wire mesh of the rows of cage floors directly onto the ground. There is hardly any space for them to turn around, as international standards allow foxes just 0 0.0 square meter of floor space. Floor space, well, it consists of a wire mesh surface. The animals go up and down, up and down, all day long. Arctic foxes. As there is no visual protection for the foxes, they have no way of hiding from view. They stay in their single cramped cages for many months until they are harvested. As foxes like to dig in the ground and live in the foxholes they've dug, the wire cages are very unpleasant to stand on. And as the feces simply drop down under the cages, the animals must constantly breathe in that pungent smell. Right next door, raccoon dogs. It is estimated that China holds over two million raccoon dogs in similar cramped cages, fattening them up until their winter coats are thick. At one of the many fur markets of Shandong, the animals are delivered alive and are then auctioned on the spot and killed. Chinese industry insiders estimate that 20% of the animals are not fully stunned before skinning takes place. 
the animals live through the skinning process in a conscious state, or they regain consciousness while they are being skinned. A horrible situation that can only be explained by the ignorance or the indifference of some workers. <laughs> Nothing has changed since the first documentation in 2005. There are only watchdogs present to keep the nosy cameramen off limits. What remains are the carcasses. The meat is sold on the market, and the pelts, once they're cleaned, treated with chemicals and processed, end up as fur trimmings, which are then sold in boutiques and clothes shops around the world, unfortunately. The only way to stop this cruelty is to stop buying or wearing fur trim and fur coats.